Hello back everybody. Now we are going to discuss together the second part from Carl Now Marcus. referring back to our now, outline. If you we have finished the introduction, the general context and environment, personal background for Karl Marcus, his theory of history, and then we now we arrive to his major economic ideas. Marx applied a theory of history to the society of his time as he searched for contradictions between the forces and relations of production in capitalism. So we can say that Karl Marx has applied dialectical materialism to the explanation of capitalism in order to find some contradictions inherent in capitalism that will lead to its destruction over the time. So number one we have the labor theory of value. Marx developed a theory explaining commodity prices or exchange values or relative prices for the interest of explaining wages. This theory was the theory of value. Marx depended mainly on Ricardo's theory of value as he concluded that it is the amount of labor time necessary to produce commod commodities that determines the relative prices. So then Marx started to reduce the level of abstraction in using labor to measure the relative prices of commodities by measuring the amount of labor required to produce a good by the socially necessary labor time. Here we mean by the socially necessary labor time, the time required by the average, average skilled worker to produce a certain amount of production. Marx used the labor theory of value primarily to develop the concepts of surplus and exploitation under capitalism. Here, surplus value according to Marx equals what? The difference between the price and costs of production. So we can say that the surplus value is the addition to the wages paid to labor so that goes to capitalists due to production. Marx believed that such surplus value goes to the capitalists at the expense of the proletariat who received the subsistence wage. In this way, Marx strongly believed that the income distribution in such a capitalist society was largely unfair. Now we turn to one of the important contributions by Marx, the Marxian laws of capitalism. Here we are talking about how Marx has adopted his theory of history, the dialectical materialism, to find the contradictions that are inherent in capitalism and lead to its destruction. So in his analysis of capitalism, Marx used with few exceptions the basic tools of classical economics, particularly Ricardian theory. As we said before, he was largely inspired by Ricardian, by Ricardian approach. Number one, number eight, the first of the Marxian laws of capitalism, the reserve army of the unemployed. Here Marx had rejected the Maltesian population theory and adopted the idea of the reserve army of the unemployed to explain how wages will be kept low and the profits will be maintained. According to the theory of the reserve army of unemployed, usually there will be some reserve of unemployed that will result in lower wages in capitalism. Falling rate of profit. Marx maintained that competition in commodity and labor markets would lead to an increase in capital, which in turn would result in a falling rate of profit under capitalism. This indicates that the competition in commodity and labor markets due to the activities of capitalists will result in a fall in the rate of profit under capitalism. So we can conclude that Marx as well as other classical economists have observed the falling rate of profit under capitalism, but actually they offer different explanations for such falling rate of profit. The origin of business crises. Although Marx did not have a clear theory for explaining business crises, Marx attacked Say's law, upon which the full employment argument 
was built by the classical economist where each supply creates its own demand Marcus offered three distinct explanations of fluctuations in business activity number one the falling rate of profit as we discussed before number two the uneven introduction of new technology in some sector of the economy N number three this proportionality is that develop in one sector of the economy and the spread to cause a decrease in the general level of economic activity which means that sometimes there is overproduction in one sector that will shift to other sectors in the economy and affect the general level of economic activity the fourth law concentration and centralization of capital Marx observed the growing size of firms under capitalism the consequent weakening of competition and the growth of monopoly power as individual capitalists accumulate more and more capital at the expense of small firms which by time will be eliminated resulting in a more monopoly power in under capitalism and finally increasing misery of the proletariat Marcus argued that the increasing misery of the proletariat is among the contradictions created by capitalism and will then lead to its destruction so we can conclude that the Marxian laws of capitalism show the different ways or the different explanations for the contradictions inherent in capitalism according to Marcus and that will lead to the destruction of capitalism and then the evolution to socialism followed finally by communism. Thanks so much.